Georgia Beer Company started as an idea with a couple of buddies, all who graduated from Valdosta State University, and we were just looking for something new to do with our lives. Um, most of us didn't like our jobs that we were doing at the time, and uh, someone joked that he would win the lottery, buy a brewery, and hire all of his buddies. And as funny as that was, a couple days later, we started talking about why do we have to win the lottery to make that dream happen? Let's just, let's just go for it. And so we started writing business plans and learning how to brew beer and learning everything we could about beer and just really trying to uh, really dive into the beer culture. And uh, you know, six years later, we'd have a brewery. Started with an extract kit and uh, our very first beer was an Oktoberfest and it ended up being 0% uh, alcohol because we did not pitch the yeast correctly. And uh, that's how it all got started. It started from, from level zero. It started from, from, from the very bottom. Well, when we first started playing around with the idea of opening a brewery, uh, Valdosta was one of the contenders, but it wasn't the only choice. We looked at Thomasville, Georgia. We looked at Lake City, Florida. But why pick Valdosta? Because there's other places around here that we could have went to. But why Valdosta? That's, that's a, a very, very key question. And the answer to that question is that, in our minds, it's a better hub in this region of, of the state and in the United States to open a craft beer. The closest craft brewery from this area is 90 miles, I think, in Tallahassee. And the closest Georgia craft beer was in Macon, which is maybe 150 miles away. Um, so this region, we called it a craft beer desert. We just kind of kept coming back to Valdosta. Not only did we grow up here and, and we went to college here and we had a good support structure here, but also just on paper, Valdosta is a great place. It's right on the interstate, not far from a second interstate. We have a Department of Defense installation with Moody Air Force Base, three colleges, um, an airport and rail, I mean, it was, it's just a great st strategic location for a small business to open here in, in Valdosta. We've grown tremendously since we opened in 2019. We started with four employees and now we're at 22 employees. So we grew really fast from a staffing perspective. And those are split between the back of the house production guys and the front of the house retail uh, bartenders, uh, in addition to our administrative and our, our managerial staff. So. From, from a personnel perspective, we've grown exponentially in the last two years. Uh, but we've, all, we've also grown from uh, a reach. You know, So our beer started just in Lowndes County, just here in Valdosta, and now we're in every county in the state of Georgia and, uh, and growing from there. So not only have we grown internally uh, through our personnel, we've also grown with the reach of our beer. And then from an equipment perspective, we've quadrupled our production capacity in two years. Uh, yeah, so we've, we've essentially started with our a system that's a 10 barrel system and then we've four times over increased our production capacity with the addition of new fermenters and a canning line in the last year. You'll notice if you go to different breweries across the country that some breweries are really heavy into stouts and porters and some breweries are really all about IPAs. Um, some breweries only do sours and really, you know, experimental beers, but for us, we wanted to be very well rounded. One of the things that we that we are proud of is we like to brew um, different styles of beer to style. Uh, one of those reasons is because uh, in South Central Georgia, since there's no craft breweries around here, there's really not a lot of education about different styles of beer. So when you have a brewery that opens up in an area like that, to have beers that are brewed to style instead of having wild, crazy, out there beers, having different styles of beer that are true to that style, I think is, is a very good start to educating that particular region. Now, there's some stuff that we knock around and, and brew out, out of the realm of that style. You know, that's all good, but that that's one of the things that we like to do and uh, is try and brew beers to style, as well as um, some of our, our fruited beers, we like to use uh, Georgia grown ingredients. That, that was uh, one of our big things that we like to do too, is, is anything that's from Georgia we like to use in our beers. So we have a, a mix of very traditional old school styles of beer, while at the same time, 
trying to use as many Georgia ingredients as possible. And so, for example, I'm drinking a classic wheat. I mean, this is a old school wheat beer, but it has Georgia grown watermelon in it from an hour's drive west of here. There's like 600 pounds of Georgia grown watermelons in this beer. Um, you know, historically, watermelon wheat is not a beer that you see in history. You know, in Germany, in the 1500s, they weren't brewing watermelon wheats. But we've taken a traditional wheat recipe and added a Georgia grown ingredient to it to make a really special beer that is uh, regional for us and using South Georgia ingredients. Uh, my name is Forrest Swan, and uh, I am the head brewer here at Georgia Beer Company, and so I help design all the recipes. I try to make sure that all the production is flowing in the back of the house. Well, a lot of the hops that uh, we get them from different places. Most of them probably come from the Pacific Northwest here in America, and others come from Germany or Britain, depending on the styles that we're doing. And if we're doing a particular traditional style, like say an English bitter, I try to use English hops. But a lot of the American uh, varieties, like a lot of the IPAs, will be using hops from the Pacific Northwest usually. Most of our barley comes from the upper Midwest, uh, but we actually use uh, barley from Germany and from England, depending on what we're doing. Like our, our field party blonde, our most popular one, is done with mostly Ameri well, all American grains. But then our uh, Southern Isles has a few German hops or German grains in it. Sorry about that. Um, but most of it's American as well. Um, we start off by choosing a recipe, and uh, some of the recipes were made by the, um, by the owners that you've already interviewed and the old head brewer. He's now retired and I've taken over, but most of the new recipes are then done by me. Um, so we just figure out the recipe that we're going to use, uh, the malt, the hops, the yeast, um, and then we'll, uh, you know, we'll try to make sure that it's, we can get to the proper location, you know, the amounts of hops, the amount of uh, barley and stuff, and then we'll crush the barley the night before. And then we will, on brew day, what we'll do is we call a mash, where we mix, mix the crushed malt with water at a certain temperature. And then those enzymes in the malt will break down the starches and the sugars. And then we'll clarify that a little bit by recirculating it through itself. And then we transfer it to the, the boil kettle. Um, and then that's where we'll boil it with hops. And then we'll boil it for an hour. And then we cool it down and send it to the fermentation tanks. And then we'll add our yeast there. And that's what ferments the, the wort into beer. We don't do a lot of bottling. We only do uh, one specialized bottling um, a year, the, um, the, the con porter that we do. But we can a lot, which is the equivalent of bottling. Um, so it takes a couple extra weeks longer because we want to try to make sure the beer is extra clear before we actually can. Um, and then we just, we essentially, we have the beer carbonated to a certain level, depending on what beer we're doing. And then we'll push it through the canning line with, uh, with carbon dioxide as well, and then we'll fill up the cans, seal the cans, and then package them that way. Um, I like seeing um, other people enjoy our products. I know it sounds a little corny, but actually that's, we don't make a lot of money in the beer brewing industry, but that's one of the, the perks, getting to see people, people enjoy our product. I can drink a beer anytime I want. Uh, not just that, but if we go um, somewhere uh, to a meeting or something, it's, it's, not, it's not abnormal for us to take beer with us. Uh, we've actually gone to our bank to sign official documents and brought beer with us. Everybody expects the beer guys to bring beer, and we try and do that all the time. Just like this interview, I mean, it would be weird if I didn't have a beer. I'm sure most brewery owners probably say the same thing. You know, the, the best part about working at a brewery is that you get to drink beer whenever you want. I, I think that's kind of the cliched answer everybody wants to say. My favorite part about owning a brewery is, is being able to drink beer every day. While that is a great part of it, to me, the best part about owning the brewery is the satisfaction of seeing people enjoy our product, right? So I like, to, and this sounds kind of cheesy, uh, I like to say that I'm in the business of putting smiles on faces. That's what I really want to do. When people drink my beer, I want it to make them happy, and I want them to smile and enjoy their time on earth just a little bit more. And so my favorite part about being in the beer industry is uh, having the opportunity to make people happy and to make people smile.